On the morning of October 30, 1961, seismologists observed a lurch in their seismograph readings. However, this anomaly was no earthquake, it marked the Soviet Union's detonation of humankind's most powerful weapon ever. Meticulously planned, the deployment of Tsar Bomba, codenamed Ivan, was the result of technical precision and ingenuity. The destructive physical force was immensely powerful with an unprecedented yield of 50 megatons. Everything within a 24-kilometer radius was destroyed and the explosion could be seen as far as 1,000 kilometers away. The merging of individual atoms on the nanoscale unleashed tremendous stored potential energy, creating an explosion of superheated plasma. Paradoxically, the most powerful bomb created is also one of the cleanest thanks to the intrinsic safety of nuclear fusion. In contrast to other nuclear weapons such as the Manhattan Project, the Tsar Bomba uses nuclear fusion technology rather than nuclear fission. Following rigorous deliberation, a remote detonation site was chosen over land at the Matushika Bay test site on the west coast of Nevaeh Zemli Island. The only humans at risk were the aircrew led by Mission Commander Major Andre Edumovtsev, who was tasked with releasing the bomb. The handpicked aircrew, flying the modified 295V strategic bomber had been warned their safety was not guaranteed. They could avoid being blinded by the light, but being knocked out of the sky was quite possible. Evidently, the political ramifications of the detonation were proportional to the yield. Ivan was a political statement contrived to demonstrate Soviet superiority. It demonstrated the capability to obliterate vast geological regions escalating fears of a third world war, despite the recent cessation of the moratorium on atmospheric nuclear weapons testing. Soviet political leaders demanded rapid construction time. Scientists and engineers constructed the Tsar Bomba in a paltry 16 weeks, a vast improvement over the Americans' four-year Manhattan Project. However, extensive planning was necessary before the Tsar Bomba could be safely detonated. For instance, engineers painted the 295V release plane white to minimize heat damage. Although the Tsar Bomb initially had a planned 100 megaton yield, the fear of nuclear fallout and concerns for the safety of the aircrew resulted in a final yield of 50 megatons. To reduce nuclear fallout, Tsar Bomba was detonated well above the ground, at an altitude of 4,000 meters above sea level. This resulted in the lowest nuclear fallout to yield ratio, although technically aircraft deliverable, the Bomb was too large to fit inside even the largest of Soviet bombers. Its dimensions were a monstrous 2 meters wide and 3 meters long. Consequently, a 295V was specially modified for the task, including the removal of the bomb bay doors to allow the bomb to protrude from the plane. The novel size of this bomb posed a danger to crew. On board the deployment aircraft, the massive explosion could have knocked the Airman from the sky, a parachute was used to slow the bomb's descent from 10,500 meters to its detonation altitude of 4,000 meters, allowing the aircrew to escape to safety. To improve precision, the bomb release was controlled from the ground. The aircrew had only 188 seconds from the time of release to the time of detonation. Luckily, the release bomber reached the safe zone 45 kilometers away before the explosion. In fact, the 50 megaton blast very nearly killed the senior officer who was piloting the aircraft that dropped the test particle. This nuclear weapon test was monitored near Alenia Station, 1,000 kilometers away, by the bomb design team and the test supervisors, headed by Major General Nikolai Pavlak, chairman of the State Commission. Six camera crews were assigned to film this unique moment in history. The blast was also observed by Soviet Minister of Media and Machine Building Ifm Slavsky and Marshal of the Soviet Union Kirill Moskalenko, deputies to the 22nd Congress of the KFSU. They witnessed the test explosion aboard an I-1-14, crate several hundred kilometers from ground zero. 
the massive destruction had a beautiful trait of a magnificent light show illuminated the sky, bright, like burning magnesium. Remarkably, the sound traveled for nearly an hour and covered over 1,000 kilometers in the form of an indistinct heavy blow. A gigantic fireball trailed the blinding flash that reached from ground level to about 10 kilometers into the air. The shock wave was 3,800 times as explosive as the Hiroshima bomb and on third as powerful as the volcano Krakatoa, which erupted in 1883 equivalent to 150 million metric tons of TNT. This yield is also the equivalent to all of the explosives used in World War II multiplied by 10, including the atomic bombs dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki and four times bigger than anything America has ever exploded when a thermonuclear bomb detonates an instantaneous fission reaction creates a secondary fusion reaction fusing hydrogen and its isotopes together to form helium releasing enormous amounts of energy the nuclear reaction occurs in a tiny volume therefore the energy density is very large resulting in stupendously high temperatures surpassing the center of the sun. The magnitude is defined to be well above threshold of detectability. Seismometers recorded the explosion's atmospheric shock wave on its first, second, and third passage around the Earth. The ground directly below the burst was seared by the intense heat. Rock had been turned to ash. Third degree burns would be delivered to any living flesh within a 100 kilometer radius extending for hundreds of kilometers the blast completely destroyed wooden structures and some windows were shattered in finland the damage to buildings occurred seemingly at random due to the volatile effects of atmospheric focusing which generated localized pockets of intense blast pressure these pressure waves traveled immense distances exceeding 1,000 kilometers. The fusion core released a stream of X-rays, infrared rays, and gamma rays, referred to as thermal radiation. This is visible to the naked eye in the form of a brilliant flash of light lasting from 1 to 10 seconds. The resultant mushroom cloud which followed. The blast was enormous in scale. It stretched 60 kilometers into the sky rising right through the cloud layer, and had a Diameter of about 40 kilometers. Ionization. From the explosion disrupted radio communications for the better part of an hour. Weapons such as the Tsar Bomba would ensure total destruction of a large city like New York, Paris or London, as well as devastating its outskirts. It remains the final word in total annihilation of the enemy. Target. However, would such a power weapon be suitable for combat? Since such weapons are virtually useless for military purposes, the Soviet armed forces expressed little interest in Tsar Bomba, since only one of the Soviet Union's delivery systems was capable of carrying a weapon of this size a handful of the relatively slow prop driven 295V bombers, intercontinental ranges were infeasible. Such a weapon can only be used as a means of destroying an entire urban region a major urban complex including suburbs and even neighboring cities. The scale of this destruction is much larger than any discrete urban area in Western Europe, because European settlement is so dense, use of such a weapon is equivalent to an attack on a major portion of an entire nation's population. Fallout from a low altitude or surface burst in central England could produce lethal exposures extending into the Warsaw. Packed nations a similar explosion in West Germany could create lethal fallout. As far as the Soviet border, even in the United States, there were only three urban regions at that time large enough to conceivably merit attack with such a weapon, New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. On any smaller target, it would simply be a waste of expensive fusion fuel. Even if the 295V were able to reach Chicago, the closest plausible U.S. target, which is doubtful given the enormous payload, the added wind drag of the housed bomb, and excessive normal for long-range missions, it would have been detected 
crossing the North American early warning line where it could be detected for over eight hours. This is ample time for jet fighters to intercept and shoot it down. Czar. Bomba was never intended for military use, but rather as a display of Soviet superiority during a period of grave tension between the USSR and the United States. Tsar Bomba was to be their masterpiece in a political showpiece too. At the time, the United States was able to develop very accurate missiles. The Soviets never mastered that technique very well and to compensate for that they could level a really large geographic region. The Tsar Bomba epitomized this, never again would the Soviets unleash anything as powerful as the Tsar Bomba and so the soldiers and scientists have packed up and flown away. The island Nevea Zemlya's days of a bomb site are history. Nevea Zemlya will remain the location where the ultimate explosion took place. In the centuries to come, Tsar Bomba will remain humankind's most powerful bomb ever created.